Welcome to Board Ghost, a story broadcast with games as the engine. If living is a highway, then heaven is a bus stop. Been waiting for a minute there, but has it been forever? Cause dying don't agree with me. for stories for shared experiences. We can't see you, can't hear you, but we will play for you. This night's offering is a continuation of Fiasco, the place at Toil and Trouble by Michael Meredith. With me again is... Mary Varn, Angela Weber, Kenna Conklin, Richard Molina, and me, John Holt. Uh, so what we'll do is go around and explain who our characters were, are, and tell you a little bit about where we are in the story so far. My character is Parsnip McBobbly hat or McBobble hat, however you prefer to pronounce it. Currently, I am a ghost and I am trying to work for the ghost council to remove the magical barrier between the ghosts and the humans so that we can haunt everybody. It's very important. I have enlisted into my assistance a lonely student named Hyacinth Rosemary who is doing my bidding, my mysterious bidding. It's going very well. And uh, we just found out that I think I'm pretty sure my sister killed me. Mm. Six years ago, but that's okay. I'm dead. All right. This is Kenna, and I am Parsnip McBobbly Hat's lackey, Hyacinth Rosemary. I am very excited at the opportunity because I have a very hard time making friends, and so Parsnip has invited me to join the very secret organization Hattie Friends, and all I have to do is steal gems and keep her secrets, and we get to be friends, and that is very exciting. As part of my quests for her, I also befriended via potion Nicholas Lindbergh that had some side effects on him, but I think he's recovering. It's it's hopeful. I think things are looking good. I'm Rich and I'm playing Nicholas Lindbergh, once a member of House Zombombadil, but uh, I wasn't very good in classes. And so somehow I am doing an extra credit project where I dig up all the bodies in the catacombs and put them in a room. <laughs> And it seems to be going very, very well for uh, Professor Beecham. I am now a member of House McBobbly Hat as a cover. We'll learn more about that soon enough, I hope. Uh, and I'm John. I'm playing the adjunct professor of magical medicine, Remedy Beecham. I am very much focused on my quest, I guess, to tap the source of power that the ghosts give us by being... Uh, the more afraid you are of ghosts, the more powerful they are, and the more powerful things connected to them are. And I want that power. So I've talked to young Lindbergh about doing my dirty work and helping me out prepping towards my finale, our finale. <laughs> <laughs> One of my fellow teachers it, who was reamed out along with me by our headmaster. Hi, I'm Mary and I'm playing Professor Dolores McBobbly Hat. And I teach magical home economics because I'm very clean and everybody and everything around me should be clean. And my sister is the famed Parsnip McBobbly Hat, founder of the Bo McBobbly Hat house. She always got all the glory and I didn't like that, so I killed her. <laughs> <laughs> In our grid, we have an object, a contraband watch that turns back time. A rumor, the school was built on a grave site and, ghosts, and the ghosts are angry. We have a location, the school grounds, the groundskeeper's house. And we have a need to get respect from the entire school and another need to get the truth about that week I have no memory of. And also in the mix, we have two tilts from the end of the first act. One tilt is innocence, collateral damage, and the other tilt is guilt. Somebody develops a conscience. And so with that, we'll begin Act 2. The Ghost Council has reconvened. Okay. 
Uh, because there's a bunch of bodies missing. Like Jasper Friendly's body might be missing. Oh so, no! So how is the the progression like of? Yeah. Our case going. Great. Cool. All right. And it manif like your body missing manifests as like this itch. It's, yeah. Like, it's a psoriasis. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's very. Does that sound good. Sounds perfect. All right. I'm Jazz. Mick Bobbly Hat. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Friendly. I just wanted to come and check in on, on, uh, on you as the head of the um, Human Ghost Interactions and Relations Committee. Yes, that's me. Um, uh, I'm happy to be here. I, yes, I, I, I've been developing this this strange uh, itching sensation. Oh no! Uh, and I think it's possible. You have body misalignus. Yes, that I have. I have some very severe body misalignus. I'm so sorry. Um, so I don't know what's going on with your your efforts. Sure. On behalf of Ghost Kind. Yes. Uh, okay. So I'm working on getting rid of that barrier so that mm-hmm. we don't, you know, uh, so we can haunt anywhere we want. Um, you know, we set up the barrier. It's a series of of gems and artifacts around the school. Um, I'm getting them all together. Uh. I spent all last year working on it, but also trying to solve my own murder. You know oh. how we get distracted well, by stuff like that. Of course, I haven't solved mine either. It's not. It's just a lot of work. Because mm-hmm. you know you always have that that blackout moment where you can't go back to the moment because you were alive. Of course, of course. Uh, to mm, so that's what I'm working on. Um, but I do have some progress. I've got I've got a couple of the gems. And uh, I'm hoping it'll be okay, but uh, this is distressing that your body's missing. I agree. And since I have been dead so long, I can't travel above into the school in any way. Yeah. Unlike some ghosts, the recently deceased. Yes. So I, I require uh, your your commitment to our cause. Okay. I will redouble my efforts. Perfect. Um, definitely. What's going to happen if I don't figure this out? If you don't figure this out, well, we will convene a tribunal. Okay. And we can have you, instead of being part of the, the haunting community here in in uh, in the school, we can send you abroad. Oh, no. Away and, from my body. Yes. And this itch will never leave you. This body misalignus. You can do that. You can send me away. Well, I mean, it takes some, some effort, but we'll we'll speak with the, the the headmaster of the school, and I'm sure, I'm sure they'll take our side in this. They can send your ghosts wherever we want. Okay. Well, I will work as hard as I want. I will eventually get it done. That's good. We'll have you haunting the bottom of the sea floor if you don't. Okay. And fish don't care about you at all. <laughs> They're not even a little afraid. Have you ever seen a scared fish? Now that you mention it, no. <laughs> scene. Okay, I'm gonna start my scene with you. Great. It's gonna transition, but we're gonna start over here. Hello. Okay. okay, we're just gonna jump in. So I I have all the gems. Oh, okay. I have the the two blue ones and the the two brown ones and the four yellow ones. It um, would have been a lot easier if you were in any of the houses to begin with, but you had to break into every single one. But I. Thought the other house is not make That's me special. A thing that they made up. That is definitely because a I'm thing. so special, though, right? Um, I think you're spe- unique. Special. I unique definitely... means special, right? Those are synonyms. Yep. Yeah. So I went to look for the necklace you told me should be down in the basement. Yes, that's an important one. I told you only touch the chain. But I couldn't find it. Oh. Um, I looked all over and I tried, it was really hard to sneak down there because every time I go down there, um, Nicholas and Professor Beecham are down there. Say that again. Every time I go down there, Nicholas and Professor Beecham are down there. That's not possible. Nobody goes down there. It's creepy. We make it creepy on purpose. I don't know. I mean, Nicholas appears to just be doing a lot of digging. Um, I don't really know what he's doing, but since I was there on secret business and you told me to keep everything secret, even though we're friends, like this is my secret like friend thing with you, so I didn't tell him about it. But right, that's how friendship works. It's all about secrets. But can, I mean, 
I couldn't find it with them down there. Um, so I just, I thought maybe you could give me some, some advice. Um, maybe I could bring them in on it. Maybe they could be Hattie no, friends. No, no, no. 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 We'll find another Hattie friend for you sometime. Okay. But not, not them. This is bad. This is bad news indeed. I heard some rumors around the school. Yeah. Uh, it was a while ago. Yeah. Um, Professor Beecham, like, went a little funny? It was before I was a student here. It was, like, about six months ago, I think. Yes, he went a little funny. Um, so you think that's why he's in the basement? He's well, a funny guy? Funny people? No, like, I mean, like... material for a comedy routine? <laughs> people thought he was possessed. Can that happen? Can ghosts possess people? Absolutely not. Ghosts are great. Okay. Um, they can't do anything bad. But mm-hmm. as I was creeping around, mm-hmm. I mean, um, just being around and um, listening to people and trying to get into conversations but not succeeding, um, oh. I heard a story that uh, maybe maybe there was a necklace involved in in his escapade like six months ago. Great. Excellent. So you do need to break into his home then. Okay, but I couldn't just talk to him and make him a Hattie friend? No, that's not how friendship works. Oh, right. I friendship forgot. Friendship is between you and me and Secrets. no one else. Okay. Um, so so I'm going to break into his house to look for the necklace. Yes, and only touch the chain. Only touch the chain. Look for the necklace. Keep all the gems on me at all times. Yes. Do not put them down ever. Got it. Even when you're asleep. No, I've been sleeping with them. Yes. Yeah. I keep two in each pocket. Yes. Including pants and shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go get that necklace and, and uh, don't talk to me until it's done. You're very irritating. I mean, fr- friendly. Okay. I'm going to get it done real quick then. So I head to Professor Beecham's house. Right. So <laughs> Everything's much, coming up roses. so much more bad to happen. Yeah, yeah we're going to run out of good real fast. <laughs> like an entire world of bad. <laughs> so you are House Zombadil. Yeah. Okay, and Zom- I have... Zombombadil. Zombombadil. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Zombombadil. So I have already figured out a back door into Zombombadil. It turns out there is a cellar entrance that was very old that I found to get into Zombombadil. That was one of the easiest houses to get into, if I'm honest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they make it creepy on purpose so people don't yeah. want to go in there. I use my entrance again to get back into... Right. Uh, There's like a motion-activated skeleton. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 um, and I give it a hug. It's like batteries. Um, open. Rah, rah, rah. And I have like a quick conversation with it and tell it about my day. Does it have a name? Did you name it? Um, it's, you know, Clyde. It's, you know, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but then I'm, some people, I hear some people coming, so I scurry away and I head to uh, where I believe Professor Beecham's room is. It looks like he is in there, but I know that I can't talk to Mr. B- Miss Parson at Bobble, Bobbly Hat mm-hmm. until I succeed. So I'm going to proceed anyway. And I knock on the door. Hello? Uh, Professor? Yes, Hyacinth Rosemary? Yes. What are you doing in a not... What are you doing in any house? <laughs> um, it turns out that being in other house gives you access to all houses? Uh, that makes sense, I guess. Yes. Uh, yes. Absolutely. Can I please come in? Certainly. Is everything all right? Yes. I want to... I move into the room and start, like, moving weird strafing around the perimeter movements. Did you have more questions about today's lesson? Um, yes. And also, how is Nicholas? Is he doing well? I had to leave his side for a little bit, and so I'm very concerned about his... This is a nice box. What's in this box? How is he... In that box? Yeah. Oh, I sorry. I'm just looking in this box, also behind this pillow. Um, oops, I dropped something. What's under the couch? <laughs> what are you doing here, Rosemary? Um, how's Nicholas? He can walk for the most part. This plant isn't doing well. Does it not doing well because it has a rare artifact buried in its soil that you don't want people to find? Funny you should mention soil. Have you seen the groundskeeper anywhere around? Um, so here's a question in return. People keep talking about a groundskeeper, but no one ever uses his name. Is there actually a groundskeeper? I mean, there's a house, 
a groundskeeper's house. Right? <laughs> and there's a garden there. I've definitely right? woken up in that garden. You woke... <laughs> Interesting. See, I went to the house early on before I had friends, because now I have friends. I definitely have friends. But before I had friends to try and make friends, I went there but couldn't find anyone who lived there. But it looked lived in, but like no one's ever there. And the lawn never gets mown. Which is weird for a groundskeeper. But there's always tea out on the table. When you look in the window, if someone looked in the window, which would be weird because that's like snooping. But um, also, uh, just if I can look in these drawers on the coffee table, because I'm curious, like, do you keep cards around or anything? No, just a, a map with a grid of the garden of the groundskeeper's house. It's the only thing I keep in that drawer. Oh, sure, of course. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and, uh, so why you woke up in the garden, um, I don't mean to be insensitive, but I heard about the incident six months ago. Is that what you're referring to? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, sometimes there's rumors around that maybe about six months ago you weren't quite yourself for approximately a week. Not that I recall. <laughs> oh, um, okay. It probably had nothing to do with a weird necklace then, right? <laughs> that would be weird. Um, if I can just look through some of these books, are any of these like for hidden compartment books, like for secrets? Because that's really cool when people do that. <laughs> no, those are just sort of how to map out an area and, you know, mark off. If you're like, if you've lost something somewhere, that's, that's what those books are about. It's sort of like, Cartography for treasure hunters. It's sure. a pastime. It's something I've sure. been into lately. Of course. <laughs> um, I just, um, oh, I didn't mean to bump into you. I didn't see you there. Oh, are you, you're wearing like two collars. Are you wearing two shirts? I'm definitely wearing at least three shirts right now. Because <laughs> it looks like you're, oh, is there a necklace you're wearing? Uh, oh, shit, I think he's wearing the necklace. Um, you didn't drop it in the groundkeeper yard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a facsimile necklace. If you see something like this, I'm looking for it. I'm definitely not looking for a necklace like that, but I'd be certainly very um, helpful to teachers in helping you find a necklace like that. Really? Absolutely. That would be very helpful. What can I do? Take this map. Yes. Take this shovel. Absolutely. And anywhere that's not an X, dig. Is this what you and Nicholas have been doing down in the caverns? I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about right now. I gotta go! Goodbye, Rosemary. <laughs> You're so good at keeping secrets. <laughs> 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 Just can't <shut> up. <laughs> Let's see. It's gonna have to be meeting with Professor Beecham. Oh, no. Does anybody want to name the school? I had thought about that, but I don't know what I don't want to. <laughs> River, Riverdale? Riverdale. <laughs> Curse you, Jughead. <laughs> Riverdale Magic <laughs> Academy. Perfect. It's a magnet school. <laughs> Nicholas is going to, and at this point, we've been working together a long time, so he, you know, he comes up, he knocks on your door, lets himself in. Uh, Professor Beecham, I'm here with, uh, I've got two reports for you today. All right. Okay, so first one, uh, rumor update. Okay, yes. Spill uh, it, boy. What I was told <laughs> by a member of House Trigon the McGonagall is that uh, sometime during that week that you don't really remember, you know, the, we've been talking about it, that you sewed a horse butt onto yourself <laughs> and you pretended to be a centaur. Pretending on... and aspiring are two different okay, things. Okay, that's. <laughs> I can't. I can't judge your intentions. I don't know. They said that you were prancing. You not prancing. You would never prance. You were. You were on the Trotting. roof. Trotting. We're gonna show dressage. Trotting. It's sure. Dressage. Dressage. I. I understand. Um, but you were on the roof of of the school, and um, that's not a safe place for a centaur. It didn't know, and that's why. <laughs> That's why I just came to you. Of course, I would never, I would never spread rumors like this. But I, I was told this, this is one. Filling, this is filling in quite a few blanks. Sure, sure. Wow. Yeah, just add that up to the the board, but then put some red lines in between mm -hmm. them. Make sure you've got the. We'll get that whole story. Well, yes, it's, there's still a few holes, but we're getting there. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and the the other update I had for you was that I think 
that I, I, I mean, we dug the new sub sub chamber and, uh, and continued with the, the ritual. And I think that I've got a really good candidate corpse for the thing that you're, you're, you said you wanted one with a particular, like kind of fresh. I mean, very fresh. Well, you said very fresh, but we stopped putting people in the catacombs about six years ago. Much, very fresh, like fresher than, like, brand new. I need a brand new corpse. Oh, all right. Well, I got this one. Um, it had a really fancy, said like founder of, I didn't read it very carefully, but it was, it's, it's, I have this corpse right here. I mean, it's mostly decomposed. So uh, it's the best candidate we've got. I don't know how we're going to get a Fresh corpse, though. I, I mean, we'll work with what we have, I guess. All right. Well, um, I I guess if... Is there any other way I can get any extra credit? Because I feel like I've dug up basically everything. So we've down arranged there. the patterns. Mm -hmm. We've got the ten dozen. Yeah. Um. You know, have you enrolled in the talent show? No. Oh. Okay, I can do that. There's still room. There's not a lot of people from uh, House McBobbly Hat who are signed up, and we got to have you know equal representation. So, so I'll get on the list. Yes, something that will get the entire school excited to be in the auditorium sure. at one time. Okay, I can do that. Um, what? Ooh, what should my? What should I sign up for? I mean, I'm not I'm not very talented at a whole lot, but um, hmm. Uh, no, synchronized swimming doesn't make a lot of sense for that space. Um, I think I could do like a, a, a modern interpretive syncopated dance routine. Like I could, that's, oh yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm. I got this. I it's mean, gonna you, be... you have very good marks in that class. In, yes. In yeah. magical interpretation. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, yeah. it's going to be unicirc de soleil. Mm -hmm. And I got it. <laughs> I do it all. So magique. Spelled with like six Q's. Absolutely. I'll get every... Yeah, we'll get the whole school there. That'll be really good. Thanks yeah. for believing in me. I think it, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Um, well, if you don't need me for anything else, I mean, I'll I'll go sign up for that. And then I've got a pass in magical medicine. Everything's okay. I think with this body, I'll make it work. And okay. we have a full couple basements. So all should be well. Great. And, and this one's fresh enough, right? The fresh... Enough. Fresh-ish. Fresh-ish. I mean, what could go wrong? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, I don't sense any problems coming up. Bye, Professor. All right. <laughs> I'm coming to the Professor because I need, I need some advice on cleaning. <laughs> You've come to the right the, place. This, this, like, remains. <laughs> yeah. Cleaning tips. <laughs> some cleaning mm -hmm. tips. I come into your office. I come into the home ec room. The magical sewing machines are whirring away. <laughs> <laughs> S'mores are flying out of the oven. Oh, how come no one wants to be there? I don't understand. <laughs> oh, hello. Please wash your hands. Certainly. I'll stand under the magical shower tss, <laughs> and the spray vent. It's like a whole like conveyor belt. It's like a yeah. water. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, like red. Scrub brushes, yeah. It's just like red, three layers of skin gone. <laughs> Dolores. I don't talk to you enough. No, nobody really talks to me. I I have some issues with uh, too much buildup on calcium. How do I clean up residue? Could you be more specific? If you had a... I don't know, let's say you had a chicken... And you wanted to get all the meat off the bone. What would you do? Hmm. I think I would eat it all off the bone. Hmm. <laughs> and what if the what if it's sort of like it's been in the you know the refrigerator for a while, hmm. and the 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 Sasquatch that keep the refrigerator cold haven't gotten to it yet. Hmm. Yes. Well, I think um. Here, let me get you a little recipe um, for for a potion, um, uh, and uh, if you just um, whip up um, a pot of this, and you dip the chicken carcass into it, 
um, that should clean off the meat. Hmm. And so, where will the meat go? Hmm. Um, because it's very important that I was able to collect it. Maybe it's like a slurry or like a... <laughs> Mm, that doesn't sound very sanitary. Oh no, it's very. I mean, I'm I'm getting into this sort of like repurposing. You know, it's a. I don't know. It's newfangled, but you know, the headmaster's been talking about like solar. You know, <laughs> um, and I'm I'm okay with the sacrifices to the sun, but you know, the more power for the school, the more power. Solar power. Yes, well, I believe the meat dissolves into into the potion, and um, y if if you wanted to somehow salvage what's inside, I mean, I don't know why on earth you'd want to do that. I mean, I just um, usually take it uh, a potion like that um, once I've used it to the groundskeeper's house and um, and dispose of it there. But uh, I guess you could um, take like a, a sieve or something and. Um, Hmm. Um, pour the potion into that, and then it would. Ugh, I, it's it's disgusting to even think of. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> disgusting. How will this go? I mean, we got so many bad dice here. <laughs> All right. Shame. All right. <laughs> Let's get started. I'm sure this potion will work out just fine for my purposes, and uh, the ingredients pretty easy to come by. You might have to get um, some from a magical creature that might be endangered, so... <laughs> um, everything else is, is pretty, uh, pretty easy, but the, but the one, um, one is from um, an endangered uh, hippogriff. Um, so I don't know if we have any... Um, I don't know if we have any left. You might have to see the potions master. Hmm. And we're not on good terms. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I, I head off to the potion master, and he does. he's fresh out of hippogriff beaks. <laughs> so I, I grab, uh, I grab a substitute. Mm. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Beak. Just substitute. Griffin Beak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not nearly. Hippogriff Griffin. That's very yeah. similar. Yeah. Same. It, he takes some hippo or hippo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Transmute so them into a beak. Yeah. <laughs> I find myself wandering by the statue. I'm I'm dusting it. Well, I'm I'm having a a duster magically dusted, yeah. of course. Um, I notice there might be a gem missing. Yeah. yeah. Aggressively and recklessly removed. <laughs> yeah. Smashed yeah. pot also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I just start. Oh. I forget. Have we spoken since I died? You and I. Not canon wise, right? I don't know. I don't think we've established that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I, don't think I think we... maybe not. Yeah. Um, oh. Oh no. There's a. Hmm. Something's missing here. Oh, and the it's just so dirty inside where it's missing. I just I'll have to go. I'll have to clean that. Dolores. Who's that? Dolores. What? It's me. It's me, Parsnip. What? Hey. Do you have? Do you have a portrait around here or something? Or? This is this is me. Remember, the statue of me. It looks a lot like you, except dirtier. I'll admit. You know, I never really appreciated your penchant for cleanliness when I was alive. But now that I'm trying to solve my own murder, I wish things were had been a little bit more organized in my office. Parson, why do you think you were murdered? I mean, you were quite old, and and you weren't the cleanest. Is that? Like likely to get me killed being not clean well i think so i mean it's a wonder that everybody in the school is dead already you always said that <laughs> <laughs> well you know i i just feel like i was murdered a couple of reasons one i don't remember being sick before i died and two i'm a ghost which means that something unresolved was going on. And I was pretty happy when I died, so I think probably it was the murder thing. Oh. Do you have any tips? Any ideas? I, um, 
No, I, I wouldn't have the faintest idea. Yeah. Oh, Parsnip, you, you seem much cleaner now. Yeah, I'm dead, so dust just kind of goes through. I really miss you. Well, that's well, good. I'm glad. I hope, uh... I know I wasn't very nice to you when we were alive. Um, I mean, you, you're still alive. Unfortunately. Hmm. Anyway, but, uh, now, I hope that we can be friends. And I hope we can be friends, like, six years ago also. I, uh, I made this friend last year with a kid from the, the Fern Gully house. You know, oh, Fern yeah. was yes. the kid's name. Oh, yes. Um, and I, uh, I had a... So, one of the main things I do as a ghost is the same thing I did as a kid, which is manipulate weak-willed humans. I made this kid break in to the the house, the, 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 the room, and uh, get this time-turner thing to go back and solve my murder. And she hasn't come back yet, but maybe oh, she'll yeah. find you back in time, and you guys can solve it together. Why would she find me? I, oh, well, you I were was... there. Oh, okay. I... Oh, um, Prosnip, at least it sounds like you're, you're much, um, happier as a ghost, right? I mean, things are going well for you now, right? It's a lot of conflict, a lot of work. I don't answer to myself anymore, um, but I'm cleaner, so I guess you and I can be friends, which is something. Oh, Prosnip, I would like that very much. Yeah? Yes. Well, maybe, maybe you can help me with some stuff oh sure anything this is the part where i'm starting to turn i'm starting to feel badly for parsnip and so i'm maybe, maybe i want to come clean i think poor, poorly. And that goes poorly okay parsnip how how can i help you i want to be of help to you i was you weren't it's true you weren't always kind to me and maybe maybe i wasn't always kind to you either i wouldn't have noticed I didn't pay any attention to you at all. Because you're boring. It's stupid. I mean, now you're nice. Everything's fine. Sisters. Yes, well. Yes, well, um. Well, maybe I can help you solve your murder. Yeah? Well, good news. I, I need you to get into that room, you know, that room you only have access to? Uh, and steal, like, most of the stuff there for me. And uh, take personal responsibility for stealing it. And then we can use it to solve my murder. Hmm. Okay, Parsnip. Maybe I maybe I owe you that. Um. You sure? I mean, it's going to be... You're probably getting a lot of trouble. I know you don't like trouble. I'm, I'm good at getting out of trouble. And you might have to get dirty. Well... Maybe I can wear a suit and some gloves. And maybe I'll be okay. I guess we'll see. Yes. So maybe that's the scene, or should I go to the? That seemed pretty bad. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, I think you're being you're back in the back in the manipulation. That's pretty bad for you. Okay. Sorry, sorry, Dolores. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta frame yourself for a crime. <laughs> you gotta frame somebody else. <laughs> I got my sister on solving my murder. I got these ghosts breathing down my neck about this barrier issue and about Remedy Beecham and Nicholas, who have apparently been stealing stuff. I think recently I've started getting pretty itchy because I, I don't know where my corpse is. <laughs> you know how that happens. So I'm going to have Hyacinth meet me down by the groundskeeper's house, my loyal friend. Definitely reciprocal friends. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I ever ask anything of you? We'll see. Ooh, what would you ask of me? Oh, I like that. Yeah, we're gonna go. We're gonna go into the groundskeeper's house and see uh, what's there. Am I there already? Digging for remedy? Yeah, you're already in, in the area. I join you. Hyacinth. Oh, oh, you're here. Hey, I'm you... totally undercover. I didn't give anything up. I believe you. Mostly. Uh, what, what, did you find the, uh, necklace yet? Um, well, sort of. So I went into Professor Beecham's room, but Professor Beecham was there. But I was super slick, and I, like, searched his entire room while he was still there. 
But then I noticed he was wearing the necklace. He was wearing it. Oh, and you knocked him out. You took it. Well, he said it was a facsimile. And that the real one is here. It's buried in the yard. And he gave me this map. I show her the map. Oh, wow. And he said that I should dig here and try and find the map. So I told him I was working for him. But we're not friends. I'm not friends with him because we're friends. We're top secret friends. It's you and me forever. Yep. It's true. If I was corporeal, I would give you a best friends forever necklace. Oh, my God. Can we, like, do, like, a handshake where we, like, almost touch but don't touch because you're a ghost, but, like, still we go through the motions, like, a Why whole thing? Why don't you pretend like we did that? Okay, I'm just going to, like, then we, I, we would high five and then kind of rotate on the Great. thumb. and then So I need you to come and, inside hmm? with all of the stuff you have so far because we need to get started. Okay, I've got the eight gems. Yes, you've got the eight gems. Yeah. And uh, you don't have the necklace yet. But it's 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 here somewhere. No, that... The, the necklace is very important. The gems have felt hot yes. since we since I've been in this area. Yes, is that mean something? Yes. So this groundskeeper's house. Uh huh. Um, it's a it's a very it's a powerful place. Okay. And um, it absorbs energy. Um, and so it'll you know it's probably that's what's happening. Ooh. Um, and uh, so so uh, let's go inside. And okay. Start setting some stuff up. Um, do we need to knock or anything? Why would we knock? Um, because this is the groundskeeper's house. Right. Nobody lives here. Doesn't the groundskeeper live here? Oh, Hyacinth. I, Does this look like a place that has a groundskeeper? <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, <laughs> of, course, of course not. Yeah. I knew that all along. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. So come on in. And we walk into the groundskeeper's house. And the groundskeeper's house is just sort of, it's like a, like a magical dump. So there's a lot of like meat slurry. <laughs> that, like everything you've ever cleaned up is in here. But it's like in, in this like orb that's like been growing over time as you, you dump garbage. So whenever like magic happens and like there's, you know, conservation of matter, but it, it just comes here. Basically you open it and it's this like octagonal room with a giant glowing orb of just like refuse in the middle. And it kind of looks like there's a bunch of pillars around the room. It looks like in the fifth element, you know, there's all these like things, nine of them, nine pillars. Uh, Hyacinth? Yeah. What is that? Uh, well, this is, this is sort of the room that keeps the grounds, uh, separated from being in sort of undead hellhole kind of situation. Is this our super, super, super secret clubhouse? Yes. (gasps) Oh my god, does this mean we've made next level friends? Does that involve anything for me? I mean, just next level friendship. Cool. Yeah, that's what's happening. Oh my god. Now, now take those gems, and they will burn your hands when you touch them. Uh, But don't worry about that. Just wash your hands later, I guess. Um, And all the skin will fall off. It'll be really gross, but that's not my problem. So take those gems and put them on each of these pillars. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Ah. You're doing a great job. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You are really good at friendship. (sighs) Thank you. I mean, I just wonder why no one else ever recognizes that. I try so hard. I don't want to respond to that, <laughs> uh, but it's probably because they are intimidated by your friend qualities. Oh, yeah. so now what happens? I mean, Jasper friendly really wants this to go well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, you have a vested interest. Is what I you're saying. do. I would. I think I would like this ritual to to, to go somewhere nice. Okay. Somewhere. Okay. Great. More friendly. So more friendly. <laughs> so as you put the gems on the things mm-hmm. and you step away, they begin glowing and like energy feeds from them like a line of energy into the big orb, which uh, used to be kind of a gross like green brown color of meat slurry and various <laughs> refuse is now like a burning red and sort of starts to form a shape like a door. And it's just missing like it's very clearly a nine part sphere and there's mm-hmm. just one corner missing this is excellent hyacinth you have done so well our clubhouse is almost rad this is so exciting yeah. oh my hands are god yeah Ow. that's the that means it's the friendship is working okay 
So um, just really all you need to do is get that necklace and just hold it by the chain. And um, and that's that's the, that's of course, the Jasper memorabilia necklace of good times and anti-memory. It's, uh, it's very powerful and it's very next level. Um, but no one can control it. So, so you just have to grab it by the chain and you, you just bring it right here. So just let me know when you've done that. Okay. Do you think there's any chance that the one that Professor Beecham wears, that it's not, not a replica? Do you think he was tricking me? I mean, he's never tricked me before. So probably not. Okay. I just don't know if I can keep digging with my hands all burned like this, but I'll try. I guess you could try to get them fixed. If there was a doctor or a professor of magical medicine or something, but I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, I don't have any hands at all. And look at me, I'm getting all kinds of stuff done. <laughs> well, thank you, Hyacinth. I'll, I'll, I'll catch you later. Just zoom out. Creepy <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have convinced Nicholas, or asked Nicholas, to come help me in the garden. <gasps> yes. And since he is a chemically compelled friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, I... Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Um, thank you for coming. I just... Um, I uh, I lost something here in the garden, and I've um, been digging around, but I've been digging so much I hurt my hands, and so I was hoping you could help. Yeah, that's okay. I'm really good at digging, so... Um, yeah, just, just around here? Yeah. Like, okay, so I can... Um, well, actually, I think, wait, let me just look at this piece of paper. Um, okay, because I can pretty easily dig like a three by six by six, I think. <laughs> um, but if you want me to do any other shapes, you just let me know. Um, I think if you start like five feet forward and let me see here, like uh -huh. seven feet to the left, kind of in a uh, five by five there, that should be good. And five by five. Yeah. And then we'll do there and then right. we'll, you know, keep kind of progress from there. Sure. You got it. Excellent. Excellent. Ah, uh, so there's, we, he's digging for a while, and we get through a couple squares, and then all of a sudden, tink! Oh, there's something in here. Oh, 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 I come running over. Um, don't touch, don't, don't, uh, you probably shouldn't touch it. Probably, um, shouldn't touch it. Oh my gosh! That looks familiar. No. What? Um, I, uh, uh, I just remember seeing something that looks a lot like this one so i wouldn't touch that at all what um nope, no i'm just gonna don't i'm gonna it. pick it up by the chain i i don't even I'm think i would do sure that, that will be fine that seems okay whoa um so i reach down and i pick it up by the chain excellent oh, i didn't i didn't think about that you could just you could grab it by the chain um hmm, wow. uh yeah a friend told me that that's the <laughs> safest way to pick up a necklace Oh. Is by the chain. My friend told me that. Oh, well, I'll remember that. That's yeah. good. I like it. I mean, when friends tell things, you should you should remember them. Um, so thank you for helping me find this necklace. It's okay, it's been good practice. Um, and um you can go. The, I I thought you said that I could help you out and then you would watch the routine that I'm gonna do for the talent show tomorrow. Right, but you said I couldn't be in it. Yeah, it's a... That kind of hurt so, my feelings. I'm sorry, but it's a house competition, and so I have to represent House <laughs> McBobbly hat, and I. they said they're going to do that, like, you know, after they give the awards out, they're going to give House Other a chance to But I looked for the sign-up sheet, and there's not a sign-up sheet anywhere for House Other. Yeah, you have to sign in with your the head of your house. But I... So no, it's fine. It's yeah, totally I, fine. I mean, I have very special talents that are just for me and my friends to know about. I thought we were friends, but maybe are are we friends? Yeah, we're we're friends. I just I can't. Um, and friends tell each other secrets, right? I mean, friends keep secrets. That's what friendship's about. I've been learning that friendship is all about keeping secrets among friends. Wow. Right. I, mean, I agreed with you once upon a time when we had this almost same conversation, but. Uh, I think maybe that's not how friendship works. But if works, we're maybe? really friends, then we could tell each other our secrets. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. So I think um, that you should come into the groundskeeper's house with me. Oh, really? Yes. 
Okay. I think that you came and helped me when I needed a friend and that you are you are a Hattie friend now. I you helped this come true and I think that Parsnip is going to see that you are the one that made this happen and you should get some of the credit cuz you're my friend and I don't want to take the credit from you. Parsnip. That name sounds familiar. Let's just go into the house real quick and I'll show you what this is about. <laughs> okay. All right. Um so better to practice in there anyways. It's a wooden floor, right? <laughs> so we go into the house. And you see, as Angela described previously, this now red, glowing, otherworldly door that seems mostly formed. What? Um, and <laughs> there are pedestals, each one with eight gems and one unfilled pedestal. And you thought just like upperclassmen came to the groundskeeper's house to make out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At least That's all slurry. I'd heard about. <laughs> <laughs> they're slurry. Maybe some upperclassmen are in that orb. <laughs> This um, is the clubhouse for the Hattie friends. The, and all we need to do is um, put this necklace on that last po- pedestal and then we will complete the clubhouse and all of our friends will arrive. All of our friends will arrive? Yes. What? And, and I want you to be here because you're a friend too. Okay. So this, are you ready? I mean, yeah. yeah. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And I put the necklace on the final pedestal. Oh. <laughs> <It> seemed... <laughs> <laughs> so I think the door vanishes. Oh no, did I break it? I, uh, I don't oh, know. Oh god, Parsnip's going to be so mad. She has to still be my friend. Well, I mean, you completed it, so I think that whatever is going to... I mean, it's probably... I, I have to go find Parsnip. I have to make sure this is okay. Okay. What if I ruined everything? Well, then I'm just going to go. I'm going to. Okay. Bye. Nicholas is just thinking and he looks around and he realizes that there's a really easy way for him to do his act really, really well in the talent show, which is if he was traveling at 1.5 times speed. <laughs> and so he grabs the necklace by the chain because that's safe now. <laughs> he puts it in his pocket. And he goes to practice for the talent show. Mm. And I don't know what's going to happen with that door just yet, but I want to. I want a talent show. I want to do show. it. I want to do the talent okay. show. <laughs> okay, so, so for the talent show, I think we need we need a headmaster for sure. Yeah. Um, is the headmaster hosting? Oh, absolutely. The whole show? She's the MC. Great. She's the MC. Good. Mm. I don't know if anyone wants to do any other acts before I get started. <gasps> <Yes>. <laughs> I think everybody should be a student. <laughs> Everyone has to give a go. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Welcome everyone to Riverdale Magic Academy's thirty-sixth annual <laughs> talent show. Yay! I'm your host, Woo-hoo! Gully River- Riverdale Magic Academy, <laughs> <laughs> for whom the school was made. First up, from the Fern Gully House. Well, you can introduce yourself. <laughs> Hello. You may know me as Jim Lorfafar, but tonight you will know me as James the Morfarlament. <laughs> and I will show you a trick most mundane. <laughs> this is what is called a typewriter. Ooh. And I will write what is called a letter. (laughs) (laughs) This talent show's really good. (laughs) (laughs) How long till he gets the hook? (laughs) (laughs) Ta da! Very good. Whatever your name was. <laughs> Next, from the Zombombadil House. Hi, I'm Marcy. I'm from the Zombombadil House. And um, today we're just going to do a simple reanimation of a dead hamster. Um, it's, you know, a dark art, so we're not really allowed to do it. So we're going to just kind of do a demonstrative walkthrough of how one would do it if we were allowed to do this kind of magic. But all components will be fake. So um, 
nothing wrong with what's happening here. Uh, yeah, Dr. Professor Beecham told me this was totally fine. So just one hair of what would be Oh, a, absolutely not. Um, okay, uh, thank you very much, <laughs> Marcy. Uh, that was very zombompadil of you, which gets you points in a certain way. And and now, very exciting from the Mick Bobblehat house, we have Nicholas Lindberg performing a dance. Okay, Nicholas Ooh. walks up on stage. Woohoo! love dances! <laughs> Burgly rules. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he puts on the necklace, and everything starts moving a little bit quicker. And he starts dancing around. He dances faster than anyone could dance, and it is totally like this is so, so good, Whoa. so good. Yeah. Yeah. My legs don't turn that way. <laughs> Spin around. Um, but he's up there on stage, and something is happening. Something that's really weird. It's like. There was uh, this tank that filled him with dark energy. He was he was tricked. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's, it's gonna go bad, go. right? <laughs> yeah, it's going bad. I think this is just let keep rolling, man. Yeah. He just keeps it going, and he's he's dancing around, but his legs do start twisting weirdly and backwards, and it's it's his limbs start like slipping apart a little, like his joints start falling out. And it's just all gross and rubbery. And he realizes that Professor Beecham was right and that he wasn't going to let him survive. He was like, but I trusted him. And so really quickly, he turns into like almost like spaghetti noodles flapping around. <laughs> and just, just, <laughs> just crashes onto the floor. And the whole crowd, like the whole school, they're all transfixed. And they're all watching. And everybody runs in the halls to see what's going on. And it's really sad and gross for poor Nicholas Lindbergh. But... But everyone's there. Oh, yeah. it's, a, it's a transmogrification. Like never, nothing we've ever seen before. <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> In the sub sub basement, mm -hmm. I'm mixing up the last bit of the potion. I've added the faux beak and it's not turning the color it's supposed to in the instructions, but Eh, close enough. It does smell like it says it's supposed to smell. So, that's good. So I pour it over this fresh corpse, in scare quotes, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the flesh starts to pull away, and the body starts to pull its original owner back in. God, that hyacinth is just such a weirdo. Oh my god, I just need some time to... Re Wait, where am I? What's happening? Oh, I'm not itchy anymore. Beecham? Who, who are you now? How do you know me? Beecham? It's it's me. Parsnip. Parsnip McBobbly hat? Yeah. This is your body. What Never are you mind. doing to my body? I, the question is, what am I not doing to your body, really? But there's a lot... What this is you... really uncomfortable. I'd hoped that I would just have sway over you, but it seems something's not right. I, like, start experimenting, and I can move my skeleton around and just hit you in the head. Oh. 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 What are you... This makes... You murdered me, didn't you, Beecham? For some reason, I haven't figured out yet, but I definitely blame... All right, hold on. I certainly uh... did not commit any murder. I'm above such heinous acts. I simply deal in the dead after most of those murders have occurred. No, you didn't take those things you learned about the undead and use them to gain power, did you? It's like rule number one of being a professor. You're not allowed to do that. Well, you see... You're an adjunct professor. I'm not Yeah. full-time here. <laughs> <laughs> Had I tenure, maybe I would have maintained the straight and narrow, but... See, I need a lieutenant for my undead army. And I was hoping that you would be under my sway, but some for some reason the spell and this potion that was supposed to remove your flesh and your spirit. Yes. The the self-control is just not working. Did you get all the components right? For the most part, you know, I subbed in a little bit here and there, but also just 
For some reason, none of these bodies seem to be doing what I want them to. And if you look around the chamber, there's just <laughs> <laughs> armies and armies of skeletons standing what? about. What? Did you remove the spirits from the skeletons before you tried to reanimate them? Well, that should just be part of the ritual. As long as the charms are in place, there's no way these souls could get their way back into the body and there should be no autonomy. It should be completely under the control of myself and the lieutenant. And the lieutenant, of course, should be under my control. But now I'm at an impasse. I, Unfortunately, it seems that you have your faculties. I sure do. I'm going to be honest. Skeletons might like me better than they like you. Am I right, skeletons? They all thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's the deal, Remedy. I was in the middle of this ritual that I was working on. I don't know if she's done what I wanted her to do, but um, might get out of here. What do you think happens? I guess. We could have the souls <laughs> from the door, like the doors that was open. Oh yeah, the skeletons. Yeah. I guess it's your call. Yeah. So they they all pour in. They they start to get blue glow in their eye sockets. Ooh. <laughs> you sort of point them at me mm -hmm. and they're under your command as they move towards me and the shadows of them as they loom and I shrink to the floor as the skeletons come up above me. Mm. That's the end of my scene. <laughs> oh, Fate, no. the Boss. camera points to the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking I'm walking in, in the hallways and suddenly I hear Parsnip's voice and it doesn't have as much of a ghostly tone as it once had and I can hear it coming from Beecham's sub-sub basement. Yeah. <laughs> so I run to the sub-sub basement and I burst open the doors and there's tears coming down my eyes and I see Parsnip reanimated in, in her body and there's a bunch of skeletons around you, mm -hmm. around Beecham, but I just ignore that. And I go right to Parsnip. We've all seen that. Yeah. <laughs> Parsnip. Hey, Dorothy. I mean, Dolores. I'm, I must... I must cleanse my soul. Oh, great. Time for it. I... Everything must be clean. Sure. Yep. And I have to start with myself. Good news, my bones are now clean, if you've noticed. I am now a skeleton. A skeleton. Yes, yes. well, if here, let me just... Um, Polish that off. Oh, thank you. So there was just a little bit of yeah. meat there. Yeah. <laughs> Parsnip. Do you remember six years ago when I told you that we're sisters and, and we should we should have tea? Like normal sisters have tea. Yeah, that's one of the last things I remember, actually. Yes, well. Parsnip. Yeah. The tea. The tea wasn't clean. Oh, uh, well, that's okay. See, not everything has to be clean. That's kind of your no, thing. No, Parson, if you don't understand. Uh, okay. The tea sure. wasn't clean, and I knew that it wasn't clean. Mm hmm. So it had, like, some dirt in it or it was like the parsnip yeah. i killed you you yes. did what yes but now my soul is clean and everything's okay you you think everything's okay now <laughs> yeah yes i i think that's <laughs> gonna be good. good or bad it's just gonna be wild i think good i think good oh <laughs> So what happens? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't I think thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's good because I don't get, you don't kill me. Okay. And so instead you, but you have to do, I mean, yeah. you're not going to let me go free. Sure. You killed me? I gotta say, Dolores, it's the coolest thing you've ever done. <laughs> I didn't think Parsnip. you had it in you. Oh, Parsnip, does this, does this mean you forgive me? I mean, I think if I forgive you, I'm gonna lose my rad ghost form. 
definitely going to hold it over you. You know, like our parents hold everything we do over us and our whole family's built on guilt and shame. Yes, yes, it's okay. It's more comfortable that way. Yes. <laughs> Probably what made you like cleanliness so much and me desire power. But, um, I don't think I'm going to kill you. Oh, thank you, Parsnip. I feel so clean now. Now that you know. Good. I have great news. School is haunted as fuck right now. (laughs) (laughs) There's no protections for anybody. Oh. Well, well, um, does that mean our ghosts are pretty clean? So... They were before they got their skeletons back. Oh. And seen. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, so now what we do is we take our die and we roll them. And similar to what we did during the uh, Act 1 ending tilt, you take the die and you subtract the higher from the lower. Great. And that is your total. So and then we'll read off of the aftermath table. I got a black one. (laughs) Horrible, you are probably dead. True. Everything is utterly painfully screwed and it is all your fault. So for Hyacinth, nothing to crow about. Not better, but not way worse either. Here's a white two, merciless. You might not be dead on the outside, but you sure as hell are dead on the inside. The future is a brick wall. I'm excited. Okay, I got to work on that. <laughs> so I have zero. <laughs> the worst thing in the universe, this probably doesn't include death, since death will be way better than whatever this is. Aww. Mine is pathetic. You'll suffer. Oh, dear God, will you suffer, and everyone will know it. Parsnip McBottle hat. Her and her army of undead people escape the sub-basement and begin walking upstairs. Hyacinth catches up to Parsnip and lets her know what she's done with the necklace and that it seemed to not work, but Parsnip informs her that everything is going according to plan. Nicholas wakes up on the stage. All his limbs are now like five feet long and just rubbery, like tentacle-ish, but with fingers at the end. It's real gross. And he just kind of looks around and everyone's just looking at him and poking him on the stage. (laughs) The skeletons begin to tear Professor apart, Professor Beecham. And as he sort of scrambles to get them, he, one of them, one of the, a small one, a small skeleton, he grabs a pocket watch that was hanging from its torso and blinks out. Soon after Professor Dolores McBobbly Hat's confession, she sees some dementors. <laughs> coming for her, and they swoop her up and fly away. The skeletons head to the main hall to sort of take over the school, and on the way, McBobbly Hat feel, thinks she's in charge, and then Jasper goes around and gets in front of her, and is clearly the actual master. He's got, like, a crown on and stuff. Uh, Hyacinth, wanting to help her true friend, Parsnip, and her true friend, Nicholas sees that the necklace is both the cause of the positive and the negative effects and takes the necklace off Nicholas carefully from the chain, hoping to be able to regain some balance to the situation. Nicholas kind of slows down, moves at normal speed again, but again, he can't stand up or anything. Um, Basically, at this point, he has no skeleton. It's all gone. Jasper Friendly walks over, and while everybody is, is shocked, he asks how the talent show went. And uh, awards Nicholas first place. (laughs) (laughs) The professor wakes up in the grounds of the school where they've just completed the groundskeeper's house and they're building the structure for the rest of the school. He he wakes up in in the garden of the groundskeeper's house and the watch rolls out of his hands. Professor Dolores McBobbly Hat is being flown by the Dementors to the the prison as Kaboobly-Ann. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, a family member of us. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they land and she is put in a very clean cell that has cleaning supplies. As they walk towards the stage, 
you know, Jasper's already on the stage, and, and McBobbly Hat kind of takes her place among the other skeletons. She sort of realizes she's not in charge. She bumps into her former student, Fern, who's like, oh man, I'm so sorry I couldn't solve your murder. I, I lost the watch uh, or something, and I just had to kind of live out my life, but I couldn't run into myself from the past, and then I was eaten by a lion and buried under the school. <laughs> like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, Fern, but at least we're back together again. Um, now that Hyacinth has the necklace, she is becomes the focus of Jasper, because the necklace is the focus of this magic's going on. So Jasper six a bunch of um, skeletons on her, and she is rended limb from limb oh, no. and killed. Nicholas is picked up by uh, a few of the skeletons and is taken away from the stage and put into the the tank and uh, he's able to kind of swim himself upright most of the time while he's in there. He starts feeling like this tank will be his home for the rest of his life. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, f- fright from the magic, the sort of just magical stasis of this clock watch, something is wrong and he can see, he can hear, he can't talk or move. He's just stuck in this garden. And that's when Buddy Zombadil mm. finds him and says, Ooh, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I want to bury you alive. <laughs> oh, Buddy Zombadil. What a jerk. <laughs> Professor Dolores McBobbly Hat is in her nice clean cell. She's scrubbing away at it to pass the time, and suddenly the cell door is open, and the Dementor says, it's time for a transfer, transfer, and puts a dementory hand on her mm. dirty hand and grabs her and leads her away. Parsnip McBobbly hat, as the rule of the skeletons continues in the school, they they realized that because she was officially the lieutenant of the spell, she has a little bit of power. And Jasper comes over and he's like, well, did you ever solve that murder? And and she's like, actually, yeah, my sister did it, but it's kind of cool. I'm into it. And as she says that, uh, she disintegrates <laughs> and dies. <laughs> uh, after being rendered limb from limb, Hyacinth, Hyacinth, of course, dies herself Mm -hmm. and becomes a ghost. Jasper, recognizing her part in how this all came to be and serving Parsnip as Parsnip served him, now that Parsnip is gone, makes her the lieutenant of the skeleton army. We have so many friends now. So many friends! They're all my friends! They're all my friends! (laughs) Who you are. (laughs) In the not too distant future, Nicholas escapes from the tank when they're cleaning it one day and he gets into a creek which goes to a stream and leads to a river and then into the sea where he decides to spend his life terrifying fish uh, which doesn't work very well and when he finally dies in the long distant future he sinks to the bottom and he haunts the seafloor to this day Nicholas Lindbergh but you can't scare the fish buried alive beneath the school the professor dies but his ghost is also frozen and just stares into the darkness but then he senses that he's moving and his with a blue glow his eyes open and he sees himself a skeleton descending upon himself a living person and lives out the rest of his days in the thrall of the skeleton lieutenant <laughs> <laughs> Ten years later, Professor Dolores McBobbly Hat is still scratching at the walls of her very dirty cell. She's in very good health, so she won't die anytime soon. The Dementors make sure she can't commit suicide, so she is just doomed to live in a dirty cell and go insane. <laughs> with that our story ends (laughs) 
I was one of your players, John Holt. You can find me on Twitter at Lord Joho, and you can find me on Snapchat at Not Dead John. And I'm Mary Varn. You can find me on Twitter at Mary Varn and on my web comic about people and cats who play MMORPGs at npccomic.com. I'm Angela Weber. You can find me on Twitter at Angela and Weber and at Gosh Darn Fiasco and at The Double Clicks. Those are the things I do. I'm Kenna Conklin, and you can find me on Twitter at GoingLast or at GoingLast.net to hear us talk about tabletop gaming. And I'm Richard Molina, and you can find me online at Going Last or on Gosh Darn Fiasco, or you can check me out at Atomic Game Theory on YouTube where I talk about math and games. Yay. To learn more about the players and the engines in our story, visit BoardGhost.com. You can attempt to pierce the veil and contact us at BoardGhostWorld on Twitter. Shout out through the ether if you have any desires we can fulfill. Leave reviews and comments on iTunes, your preferred listening portal. Please take a moment to subscribe so you don't miss out on the latest episodes. We'd like to thank Pat Couples for our theme song and interlude music. You can find more about Pat at patcouples.tumblr.com or on his band's page, hotelsandhighways.com. A big thanks to Mary, Angela, Kenna, Richard for playing Fiasco and being on board, Ghost. Yay! Yay! Thank you. If you're not alone in the void, share our stories. The more they are consumed, the truer they become. <laughs>